The John Muir Way, Day 5. The route is being adjusted, is what my app says when I've gone off route. Well, it was an off route sort of day today, taking us from Polmont to South Queensbury, well, actually to Inverkeithing, it was 20 miles. Top travel tip number one. When accommodation is hard to come by and very pricey in the rather upmarket South Queensbury, use a bit of local knowledge and book a place on the other side of the river, which is much cheaper. A seven minute journey on the train and you get to enjoy travelling across the World Heritage Falls Bridge. Top travel tip two. Beware of booking accommodation that uses a train when there is a national rail strike. To be fair, that was hard to predict back in April when I booked. I adjusted the route before we set off so that we would end up walking across the fourth road bridge and up into Inverkeithing. As this added a few miles at the end, we decided to cut out Linlithgow. It was always going to be a long day because again this is where we were catching up some of doing the route in nine days rather than ten and I decided 20 miles was probably my limit. After we both adjusted our laces, well actually Ed adjusted his laces several times, we crossed over the M9 and Ed was less than impressed with the path I then led him on. It was a tad overgrown and a local angler who had been around these parts most of his life, I suspect, had no idea that the path was there. But it was, and it got us to where we needed. We crossed the golf course, duck, and walked past the Grangemouth refinery, where there was a very loud alarm, and we saw workers gathering at a muster station. Fortunately, it didn't blow up. We walked up and down and up and down and up and down a country road, which was not good for my hill allergy. Shortly after Bowness, we encountered James Watt Cottage and then the river. Sadly, Tesco's had had no gluten-free sandwiches. We continued walking by the river and by eight miles in, the porridge pot and banana that I'd got from Aldi for breakfast were clearly just not having the same effect as egg and bacon and sausage in terms of energy. I was knackered. We trudged on. Well, I did. I was slower up the hills than Ed, but I'm not sure that he noticed. <clears throat> having to walk around the estate of Hope Toon House was very challenging, especially as there were no benches. Why are there lots of benches when you don't want them and none for miles when you do? As we left the gates, I spotted a tree stump and promptly adjusted my stagger. Not sure what the visitors to this grand estate made of us lounging by the grand front entrance, but legs were aching, feet were very sore. Ed produced his little camping chair, which had been carrying with them. He sat on it and it promptly sank into the grass, almost tipping him over. But he just managed to get out before I could get my camera out, sadly. And then he attached a special soft ground mat. Ooh, all sorted and it did the job. The weather had been warm and humid throughout. Spurred on by our lunch, we set off again and walked under the North Queensbury crossing. I then spotted a car registration, which was SM. 56 NBB. Given NBB are my initials and 56 is my age, I presume the SM was a reminder to me to smile, which I did and continued smiling to the fourth bridge. I said to Ed it would be good to walk on the other side as that was going to be easier at the other end. We went through the underpass and came up on the other side, which was shut. We returned through the underpass. I was very popular. Having started walking across the bridge, I decided I would definitely prefer the train. It was the fastest kilometre of the day and I didn't stop to admire the view. It's a height thing for me. As we got to the end, 
the adrenaline also got to the end and suddenly the aches and pains were back with a vengeance. Just a couple of miles to go, mostly uphill. Finally arrived. We went out to the chippy to find food. The hotel didn't serve food. And as we made our way back through the hotel, I opened the door to go down the stairs. Except it wasn't. It was a gentleman's room, and as I opened the door, said gentleman was lying on the bed, phone in hand, grabbing his underwear from round his ankles. I beat a hasty retreat with a profuse apology and adjusted my route.